This is UK Horizon spending the weekend behind the scenes with the rock and roll roadies, the strong language beer, bottoms and birds, and even a bit of music from the darkness. We're out and about with one of the uh, most unusual rock bands on the toilet tour circuit, The Darkness. They're a sort of ZZ topless, and they're off on the road to Reading. But Roadie Tom has f***ed up big time and could get shown the red card. However, bass player Frankie, winner of the Eric Cantona Mystic Seagulls Award, knows just how to cope with this kind of problem. Just try and deal with it and keep a United's a kind of kernel of solidity underneath everything. Find out if he knows what he means in another mad, bad and dangerous episode of Roadies. <laughs> It's 12.30 and in the street just around the corner from Pentonville Prison, guitar heroes The Darkness and their crew are collecting their hire van from the strangely named tour gear company Matt Snowball Music. Hello there, I'm Pedro, uh, I'm the sound engineer for The Darkness, I do the front of house. Um, at the moment we're just picking up the van and from now we're going to go to Hackney, pick up all the gear and we're going to Reading. <laughs> This is the man with the keys and the job of getting the band to the gig on time and in one piece. I'm Tom. Um, I am, uh, what am I? I'm, I'm roadie, driver, guitar tech. We're going to Reading. I'm not sure exactly what we're doing. Do you know what we're doing? Yeah. We're doing a gig. <laughs> Are we going to do a gig apparently? Yeah. <laughs> The Darkness are a four-piece rock band like no other. Topless frontman Justin Hawkins prances around the tiny stages of the toilet tour club circuit like Aerosmith's Steve Tyler in fur trousers. This bloke, who looks like his brother, is in fact his brother Dan. They don't have a record deal and so rely on live gigs to gain new fans. Tonight, they're playing at the Fez Club. 50 miles away in Reading. First stop of the day is to pick up drummer Ed. This is uh, the third, third tour I've done with the darkness. Um, oh, I love it. Yeah, they're, they're hilarious to hang out with. I'm a musician myself and I've worked with Ped in the studio quite a lot and he sort of wrote me in. So uh, I've suddenly become a roadie and, um, and a guitar tech overnight, and I love it. There he is. Like every good tour bus, this one is fitted out with a video player to amuse the band through the long hours on the M40. Sadly though, there's only this one dodgy looking video to play. It's 1.30 in Hackney, North London, and the band have arrived to collect their gear and the rest of the band. This is Dan, the guitarist. That's Frank, the bass player. <laughs> At this level on the rock and roll food chain, loading up the gear is a DIY affair. Right, we've got the gear all packed up. I'm just going to land the uh, bodies into the back of the car now, the dead bodies. And then we're heading off to Reading, right now. Just time to grab some petrol and a pasty before heading off to the motorway. But 400 yards down the road from the garage, the van grinds to a halt. It turns out that filling with unleaded petrol was a bad idea, especially as it's a diesel van. 
Uh, well, I just um, thoughtlessly filled the, the tank with uh, what, what I would normally put in my car, so, yeah, I, I uh, unleaded fuel in a diesel tank. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm just hoping that uh, I haven't damaged the engine or uh, caused any big problems other than a, uh, a delay in getting to the gig. Tom decides it's a good time to panic and runs off back towards the petrol station. This is hilarious. <laughs> he's coming back. He's back two minutes later when he realises he's no idea what he's doing and joins in a spree of frantic roadside mobile phoning. That's who? Just? 100, 100 yards up the road. Diesel injection van. Can you tell me where that is? Well, yes, actually, I put uh, petrol in a diesel. The road. You call it Sue, or the Yeah. yeah. Two. And we got one and a half hours to get to Reading. Mary, Mare Street. If some of the band seem completely unfazed by this disaster, it's because of an acute sense of deja vu. Hello. Well, last time this happened, um, it, I did it, and um, we were on our way back from Wales. And, uh, you have to take the van into the garage and they drain the engine and you have to pay about 150 quid. The thing is, when I did it, I realised, I just turned it on, just I turned it on, I realised that I'd put a shitload of petrol in the diesel engine, but, so luckily it didn't go for the engine, but we've just driven up the road, so I think it's gone into the engine, which could mean us losing our 500 quid deposit on this van. And we filled it to the top, which is about 70 quid or something. It's always when we go on the M4 or yeah, A4, or head yeah, for the A4. I thought you were standing in Swindon last time, but, uh, yeah, but that was a different yeah, scenario. It was putting yeah. diesel in a petrol van, and, uh, and it's an old van, so. After 40 minutes of phoning, everyone's feeling profoundly uh, philosophical about the situation. We stand united at moments like this. Take emotion out of the equation feelings, everything, just try and deal with it and keep a kind of kernel of solidity underneath everything, beneath all of the emotions. And I think it was uh, Pete Satira, there's a chance we can make it. And that's what we have to cling on to. The In moment. the words of Starship, we, we built this city on rock and roll. And we're still in the city. No. Uh, right. After another 30 <laughs> minutes in a freezing van, there's still no one pointing a guilty finger at Tom. Not worried at all. Yeah. Whatever. Things, things will take their, um, their natural course. Yeah, you know, there's not a lot you can do really. You just have to wait and hope it works out. Yeah, actually, that, that, that um, potato thing. That kind of As I said before, it's best to take feelings out of the equation because uh, feelings only create pain and uh, blame, blame culture. That's the last thing we need at this moment. I'm so sorry that I've caused all this, I really, really am, um, really f***ed up, big star. But although they're hours late and no nearer to Reading, at least they now have an escape plan. Well, what's happening now is that I'm being very miserable and sorry for myself. The guys are sort of a mixture between really relieved that they're missing soundtrack and don't actually have to bother doing it. <laughs> I'm feeling really bad that they're not going to be able to get a practice in because they're not sure that they're going to be very good for the gig. I'm joking. Um, yeah, so looks like there's a new van coming. And uh, the guys are going to get in. It's a very small van which apparently has a bench in the back and might just fit all the gear in. So potentially you guys are going to have to carry some of the band in your car, sitting on each other's laps. And uh, get off to the gig. Um, pronto because obviously you know they're in danger of missing the gig let alone the sound check now um, and I'm gonna stay here with this band and um, take it to an AA registered garage and get it siphoned and sorted and then get it back to um, the van depot and then go home with my head hung in disgrace while the band suffer patiently here's some music Justin Hawkins has an over-the-top vocal style to go with their rather bizarre stage act. Maybe it's those tight furry trousers. Oh, 
It's four o'clock. They should be in Reading already, but at least the new vans arrived. And because of that handy shelf in the back, getting all the gear in isn't easy. While Tom and Pedro finish loading, the guitarists make sure they reserve their seats in our camera car. Ed the drummer loses out. So, um, you're right in the van. Well, it's like a seat, <laughs> in some ways. I've truly stuffed things up for them today, but, uh, you know, hopefully it'll have a happy ending. Already two and a half hours late, and with the London rush hour to do battle with, will they make the venue in time? Find out after the break. We are the road, road.